property. Making sure that any way that you make the position. Fabian Reed, a youngster. Because at the minute, the top mark. Very old Zulu himself and his place in the George Headless Stand. What this they come. themselves on and you come on into con It's approaching. Two minutes later. Bit. Maker. So quite just off. Things from the geography that they're playing. The green idea from to stay there and it will be oh, the makers um, it took a similar four. Is Burlick getting his first touch of the foot? Forward. Thomas coming in there strongly. Devon Hacker Watson played at Sporting Central Academy before going. All over the United States, it's New England Revolution. Jamaicans in possession. Focus is over on the far side. The sharing and keeping of the football is the battle cry from Theodore Whitmore. This is Watson. Foster coming deep to assist. So running around like a little live wire the Jamaican players now Antigua so none of the teams really settling into a pattern just yet and uh, employing a Panamanian referee John Pitty so you're watching live coverage of Jamaica versus Antigua and Barbuda 82 international friendlies took place around the world as we have another look at this. Just a little nudge there coming in from Neil Fisher, playing at DC United along with Darren Mattox and of course Dane Kelly. Dane Kelly wearing the number 16 this afternoon. Free kick to Antigua over on the far side. Marley Thomas complaining about something. Having a bit of chatter there with Neil Fisher. That's Fisher. Went to St. George's College, schoolboy here in Jamaica. So free kick thing quickly. By Antigua. Not had a great sighting of the Antiguans down the years, Clyde, but this color outfit 
It's a bit striking. Well, <laughs> their, their, their national flag is red, <laughs> black, white, and blue. But going for the, the red and black um, today, they're, they're, they're looking to, to make a, a striking appearance here <laughs> in Jamaica. They say the, the red usually is the, the, the color that that draws the attention of the bull. And I think they want to get some attention here <laughs> of the Jamaicans. Here, Mario Williams. So Ronaldinho kind of a no-look pass. Not seeing him, just seeing Romario Williams in the in the game for the first time. After five minutes is his first touch of the football. But he's a deadly player on his day, unplayable. He too, Kemar Taxi Lawrence, only of Harborview. Congratulations to Harborview and the other five teams who are in the playoffs for the local Premier League here in Jamaica. This is Fisher. Forced back. He has Watson in front of him. Decides to play Reed. The return pass is to Fisher. Now it's in the middle of the park. McCarthy. Once at Montego Bay United. Played the last season, which his season ended on Wednesday. Or UWI. Passing midfield player. And a player who has the ability to change a game with one pass. Brilliant vision as well. Foster. Hot striker. Scored a brilliant goal against South Korea. Sure, you'd love to have something like it. The Jamaicans looking menacing around the area. Ooh. Kicked over. And referee Pity right on spot. And the dangerous Williams was right there. Looking to motor his way into the 18-yard area. Brought down on the top of the D. And a free kick to Jamaica in a very, very dangerous position, Clyde. Yeah, good good move from Jamaica. Um, both teams feeling their way. Um, Romario Williams looking to, to drive that right foot shot into that far left upright and just blocked. By Daniel Bowie. Right, and, and that free kick just about 22 or 23 yards from good dead center, good position, and a good, um, probably the left footer would want to, to sneak it to exactly that right hand post where the goalkeeper um, Griffiths is, is now standing, Mohammed, sorry, is now standing as a five man wall is being set up. But no doubt, probably two players will, will line up four players having a good discussion. All right, so involved in the thought process here. There's a Kemar Lawrence, of course, who can forget that brilliant winner against Mexico. Romario Williams also fancies his chances as well. And also there is Fabian McCarthy. All three are capable of doing the business, but they'll have to decide on one. And it does seem as if it's going to be Fabian, it's going to be Kemar Taxi Lawrence based on the shape of the players. But you know how deep these are for football uh, like these and in situations like these. But it looks like Fabian McCarthy. Here, Romario Williams will have the leg up. And the wall does its work. And ball cleared away. Lawrence playing it all the way back down to his defense, trying to start things over. William Teagan's a resolute in defense. There's a long range effort, a speculative effort, just going high. And uh, Romario Williams, Romario Williams again. deciding to. No, this time Javon Watson. Javon Watson, the former another, captain. Another tackle just on, just on the strike, and looks like he got a hit just across the instep. But the Jamaicans looking to get their shots off yes. in the early stages. So they're. Approaching well, eight minutes gone in the game, and the Jamaica now getting a taste for it as we have a look at this free kick once more. Romario Williams, nothing tricky in this for the Antiguans. It was clear he was going to be the man who mm. went the kick, and the shot was feeble, even yeah. though the wall did its its job. So, not the greatest of uh, opportunities taken there by the Jamaicans, but I'm sure they're going to be hoping for more and much more. Here they are, though. The early passing sequence has has been with with the Jamaican physical presence of the Antiguans. They are noticeably larger in body stature, just at a glance. Yes, and they hardly go forward. They're standing their own half well, once the Jamaicans. They're the holding football. their defensive to, to give up a goal and having a good look to see what the Jamaicans are up to, and, and no doubt looking to pounce in a counter-attacking um, position. At the moment, you see the. Four at the back, the four in midfield that cut out and Javon Watson seeking passes. Not a long history between these two teams. Here's Fabian Reed trying to play the ball. It's the Antiguan defense and it just seems as if it's a goal kick. So not a long history between the teams uh, from eight games. The Jamaicans have won six. The Antiguans have managed just a single victory and the other game ending in a draw. And these two teams, interestingly, will be meeting again close to the end of April because the Jamaicans are set to embark on an Eastern Caribbean tour, a short tour, and that will take in games against uh, Dominica as well, and of course, uh, and Antigua and Barbuda. So the, the teams are using up the, the FIFA 
um, dates to make sure they take advantage of it and the official start of preparation for the League of Nations. We conquer So we're approaching 10 minutes in the game. Fabian Reed seeing a lot of the football. Just passing and moving. Yeah, and in an unaccustomed position. Looking yes. at him, I know he, he played that in Trinidad in the Pro League, but we are used to seeing him as a striker. As to um, interesting to see how Fabian McCarthy will play in that um, defensive midfield role. Here he is now with the ball. He's playing alongside Javon Watson um, today in that position. So Malik Foster trying to win the ball. Referee Patty says, Pity says, uh, unfairly so. And Stephen Brown, a striker for Antigua, he plays his football in Antigua. And as I say, they have quite a number of players. Charleston, well, they have one that plays for Charleston Athletics. We'll go through them as time permits. But here's Romario Williams, who's in position of the football. And this is a man we just mentioned, Stephen Brown, all went into touch. And the Jamaicans have one for themselves, a throw in. So not not much fluent movements as yet, Wayne, as both teams getting used to the restricted eras. You, you, you're looking at, at four restricted eras, two in each half, as now you see the Jamaicans on the left side of the cricket pitch gone over now to the right side of the cricket pitch. And the fifth era on the field is that brown era in the center that everyone is trying to avoid if they can. Jamaicans, somebody, Foster, just dibbling in and around that little pocket there and his movement has the potential to unsettle defenses because he moves around so nicely but just now giving a possession to the Antiguans uh, for throwing over on the far side and it, it Clyde all things considered I'm just getting a shot of the the George Headley stand not a bad turnout over there when you consider we're coming off a really expensive weekend with the boys and girls champs and we're still to see a shot of the North stand but you'd yeah. love to see more but all things We'd love to see more, and, and yes. it's a new campaign, so, so um, it's, it's, it's not unusual. So let's see how that goes, and hopefully the crowd will develop. The Jamaican crowd has a bad habit of coming to games just after it has started. Some are on their way up and will come in and, and add to, but not a bad crowd from, from what from what we're seeing there. At of, of note, I'd just like to tell you that the Jamaican goalkeeper and captain Andre Blake has only touched the ball when his teammate played it back to him. He's had a very quiet afternoon so far. Very quiet 12 minutes, 13 minutes in the game so far. And the Jamaicans untroubled. And uh, Antigua had an anxious moment to deal with a free kick on minute number a nine approaching 10, which Romario Williams kicked into the wall just to bring you up today, just in case you're joining us. And we want to welcome you to Reddit TV's live coverage of the Jamaican international friendly against Antigua. Sean Francis, the good old-fashioned kick-up field, the Antiguan defense, dealing with it well. Yvonne Watson, veteran of this team. There's the Antiguans coming forward in a meaningful way for the first time in this game. They themselves, Clyde, are working their way slowly into it. And the Jamaicans are keeping possession and keeping possession very well. Overhit? No. Mm -hmm. He got onto the end of that one. Let's see what he'll do. He's trying to give the defender the runner out for Mario Williams. Scores goes to Thund in the SLA. Very good. Nice feet. Still Williams. The ball played in. A chance here. Well done. Very good piece of improvisation there from Malik Foster. But goalkeeper Mohammed equal to the task. Good move there by the Jamaicans. Romara William, number 20, gets into the byline, driving inside to the six-yard box. And Malik um, Foster, coming from what he thought was a, a ball across goal early, came back to the secondary position, got a heel in, and tried to get a shot on goal. Did so, but well saved by goalkeeper Mohammed. Good move by the Jamaicans. And it will be interesting to see how Malik Foster keeps moving off the ball. So too Fabian Reed. Both of them looking to get in and out of spaces while the finishers, Dwayne Kelly and Ramara Williams, looks to put the, the accent on it. Here comes Antigua. Here they are, the Antiguans. This is Brown, operating mostly on the right side. They're yet to even get anywhere near the Jamaican 18-yard area. Well, they do so this time. The ball swung in, and the goalkeeper, Blake, just pulled away from his cage, and absolutely no problems there getting that one away. Here's Foster, playing almost like a Javi Iniesta kind of a role, linking the play from where he's at. One moment you see him on the right, the next he's on the left. It seems as if he gets 
the license to roam. So the Antiguans have won the ball in the middle of the cricket pitch. Brown leading this latest attack. Ball took a deflection, unfortunately for the Antiguans, and luckily for the Jamaicans, right into the pathway of the Jamaicans. And of course, JFF live as well. You can watch the coverage on that one. Of course, you know, Clyde, they're trying to make sure that they they push forward this new thrust. You can probably explain it a little bit more. Yeah, man, the, the, the new station that has been in vogue and, and hence this is the third game that is being covered um, on JFF Live as the new IT segment comes in, the JFF showing innovation and getting with the new technology and serving to many clients in different media. So JFF Live carrying this game along with Ready TV and the national team of Jamaica versus Antigua and Barbuda. All right, here they are, Fabian Reed. Still in their own area. A player I have a lot of time for is Sean Francis. He's operating dead center of the Jamaican defense. Here they come forward once more. This is Javon Watson. Get this latest Jamaican forward movement in motion. Fisher. Cross was the expected move, didn't quite come. Fabian McCarthy back to goal here. And a shot equal to the task, just upper, just moving in and around that little box there. Fid um, Mohammed, the goalkeeper, and just now that shot coming in from Dane Kelly back to goal, did well to spin and get the shot off. Glide, yeah. And the, the Jamaicans trying to go one and one, um, just outside the penalty area again fabian reed on the right and um malik foster on the left and interchanging in those spaces here is no reed on the left the number 19 player for jamaica getting in those spaces and dane kelly as we saw posted up against his defender turned had a left foot shot that was easily handled by goalkeeper Mohammed. the second shot on target by the Jamaican from two attempts. Free kick here by the Antiguans to be struck by the captain Griffith. Well, charged down that time by Williams. And it results in an Antigua throw. A so, bit careless there by the Jamaicans. Both players turned their back to the ball and the, the pass was quickly made down the right flank. And I think the, the attacker could have crossed it with his right foot. Delayed brought it to his left. Gave Williams a chance to block it and re referee um, John Pitty. John Pitty has again looked like he's has one of the players that will go for public treatment that he's not satisfied with, one of the Antigans. And that's player number seven, um, Brown. A throw in to goes, goes off to Antigua to be taken by Marlon Romeo. So left all the way from his defensive position to. Effect the throw. Good turn there. This is Quinton Griffith, the captain. And the left footed effort just swinging and swirling in the air. Goalkeeper Blake, too good a goalkeeper for that to even begin to possess or pose a problem for him. Well, that's the third attempt that we have seen by the Antiguans doing that, coming to the right side, changing the ball to their left foot and swinging across in, which, which suggests that they're looking to play that cross in at the near post to their striker that will probably get in ahead of Blake these crosses and try to to get the measure of the Jamaican defensive line. Jamaican defensive line, as we see here, sitting deep and, and keeping possession and the pace of the game, the direction of the game, and Malik Foster. Good lateral cross great. there from Foster. Well done by the Jamaicans. The Antiguan defense, though, still answering successfully the question. But here's Taxi Lawrence, Kemar Lawrence, if you prefer. Just getting away from him under a bit of pressure. And he gets some assistance from Fabian McCarthy. Has a very good right foot. Thought about the shot, you think? And he decided then to go against go against it. Oh, this is Watson. Reed. Foster. Hounded here by Brown. Good move here by the Jamaicans. Lawrence, does he have the legs to get there? Yes, he does. And gets a good crossing in the end. This is Reed. A more familiar position for him. Decision making very poor in the end. But encouraging movement there from the Jamaicans. This game is creaming out for some bit of magic, if you like. And we're approaching 20 minutes. So it's Antigua and Barbuda, an international friendly at Sabina Park. If you're joining us for the first time, the number five here is Fabian McCarthy. And he brings Fisher into the play. 
So the Jamaicans are shearing the ball. Williams. Just a bit too much. Giving the Antiguan a look at that one. This is Bowie. One of their eight overseas base players in the squad. Ladiel Ritchie. One of the rising stars of the Jamaican defensive setup. Did well to turn his, his attacker there, turn inside, turn outside, and went to the line and played it down the flank. And Fisher back in possession for Jamaica. Watson strokes it across to McCarthy. Lawrence, the only player in a red boot on the field. You can't miss him. Bright red. Became fashionable during that historic run to the World Cup when Walter Blacker Boyd first wore one in the National Stadium and it, created, it caused a sensation. Actually, there's another Jamaican player in a bright red. It's Javon Watson. Here he is. Gets a return pass from Kelly. Overhit and Malik Foster. Needed the speed there, perhaps over Usain Paul to get there. But good reading of the football, Malik Foster, a player who is really on the verge, you think, Clyde, breaking through, if not in Europe, in, in, in North America, somewhere there. He's been in a rich vein of form for his club and country. Yeah, well, one of the young players who are on the up, and he would be hopeful, so to his club, Portmore United, that he gets into the, the next stage of his professional career, um, has see a few duties with Portmore, and I think he'd be concentrating on that, the Premier League, and even more so this game. But uh, uh, just in evidence of that pass, as the Antiguans come forward. Here they are, operating on the right. Miles Weston. Reed intercepting and almost giving the ball away. But the Jamaicans are back with possession via Kmart Lawrence. Good move there by McCarthy, selling the dummy. Watson, possibly the most versatile of the Jamaican players. One of the places he's not played probably is in the goal. So he's trying to fly Dane Kelly. Horrid clearance by the Antiguans, results in a throw into the Jamaicans. And a response the, to the last two passes from the Jamaicans down that right side. Long 35 yards searching ground passes, trying to find the space behind the defenders. The Antiguans are playing deep in the early and keeping their defensive line. They don't want to expose um, that, that area behind their back line. Saw Romara Williams get behind. First corner conceded by the Jamaicans as the Antiguans are creeping forward more and more. And we saw just in the beginning of the possession stage between Watson and McCarthy, just then you had five players blocking. Here Honor comes the to first shot from the right, from the far left, I should say. It's a ball coming into the area. Dealt with farewell there by Fabian McCarthy. Antigua getting a taste for it. They're coming forward with a bit more alacrity. It's been heavily policed over on the far side there by Fisher. A throw in. It's a number 10, Callum Martin. There's a corner to Antigua once more, so a second corner in the space of a minute. Here they are, feeling a bit more comfortable. They have watched and they've seen what the Jamaicans have to offer, and you get the impression that they say, okay, let's have a go at it. 23 minutes gone in the game. And midway, the first half, and uh, Blake called. A third corner. A bit of mix up there in the Jamaican defense. And the Antiguans at the moment asking the questions of the Jamaicans. And goalkeeper Blake, the captain, remonstrating with his defenders. Sean Francis also trying to direct traffic in that area. A quick corner taken by the Antiguans. And the ball is back in the danger area. A chance for Antigua. And finally the pressure eases. Or is there another corner? Yes, it does seem as if they've gotten another one. So the Antiguans, a nice passage of play here for the Antiguans, and they're putting the pressure on Jamaica. So four corners in the space of less than what, two minutes or so. Yep. This one though, unlike the others, will come directly in the 18 yard area. Red and black shirts waiting on it. And finally referee Pitten brings up it a respite to the Jamaicans. 
and and the the Antiguans were were sitting defensively, being cautious, being being safe, and at the same time looking for the dead ball situation. Got four of them on a trot in about three minutes, as you said, Wayne, and two short corners first. A, another one quickly taken just outside the area. The last one more direct, which is I think what they're looking to do. We saw them searching with left-footed um, crosses from the right side earlier. To, to get to the head of the number nine, Weston. And then we saw the, the last, more deliberate um, direct kick from them, again, searching for the big number nine, Weston. And I think they're looking to get one of those defenders in between the two central defenders. Here comes Malik Foster. Foster on the left. Cuts inside brilliantly. Ooh. Will he get a shot off? Yes, he does. But then the side netting, many thought it went into the goal. But a good move there by Foster. Foster. He's losing the defenders. He's so nippy and so quick and very irrepressible. That time he got away in the box. He looked across. The defender thought he was going to go for the cross. And instead, just slightly with the right foot, just moved the ball away. He got a shot off, lacking in a direction. But no question about the effort and his movement in that little area. Looks like they had a roll on the field, so the, the field may be a little bit hard. And the defender trying to turn lost his footing. And Foster would have wanted to have that shot on goal, but I think was impeded by the other. The Riddos came by his right foot and squeezed it outside the near post. Here comes Jamaica at the half line. You'd start to wonder if the Antiguans are feeling a bit more at home here because they play their games at their national stadium which is the Antigua Recreation Ground mm -hmm. which is in itself a, a, a cricket ground here's another one to Malik Foster this time he gets the ball in a chance here for Jamaica oh it's kind that one that time was Dane Kelly right inside the 18 yard area Fabian Reed playing it on a plate for him and he scared the ball Dane Kelly Jamaica coming close on two occasions in fact it was teed up by Romario Williams and Reed was right in that vicinity but the shot, the final shot came from Dane Kelly and it went over the bar. Close call there for the Antiguans. The Jamaicans are getting in that little danger area a lot more now. Three times down the left side, they have they've created that spot. No, no, that one was played across and, and skipped by Romario Williams to get the defender away from it. And his teammate had it and skied it. And he too would not be satisfied with that finish. He would want that back right now, I'm sure. But this boy Malik Foster has really stepped up his game in the last two or three minutes or so. I say he was in New York for the last two weeks on a trial with New York Red Bulls, the team of Kemar Lawrence. So referee Pity not happy. He's called over Theodore Whitmore, the national coach of Jamaica, right? Also involved in the thought process is Marlon Romeo. Okay, now referee Pity, and he's given the instruction for the throw to be taken. Jamaican head coach Theodore Whitmore standing in his technical area surveying what's happening and you could bet he was going to have something to say there so if you're joining us for the first time the Jamaicans are operating in their familiar black and gold with a sprinkling of green somewhere there about in the jersey or on the shorts the Antiguans wearing two of the three colors on their national flag minus the white today but they are defensively very organized and very disciplined. And the Jamaicans have managed to get behind the defense on at least two or three occasions and really, really could and should have made use of one or two of those passes or opportunities. Approaching the half hour mark, and as you can see at the top left hand corner of your screen, graphically demonstrated scoreless between these two Caribbean rivals. The Antiguans are not, if you like, Clyde, one of what? to talk us through this bit of play here well um the the turnover of of passes by both teams and as the defender tried to in dane kelly does just blocked him and and the third infringement against jamaica called there uh, so in cricket of course you'd have to top the big four like the nt that yeah they have trinidad and tobago barbados and guyana and jamaica in football it's the, the big two trinidad and Jamaica, Jamaica, then there's another tier. Not necessarily them. in that order. Yeah, but whichever order <laughs> it comes in, but then you have the, the yeah. other tier behind them, and Antigua would find themselves along with Grenada in that tier as well. Um, probably a few steps down. Um, Haiti would come immediately be behind that. 
and probably to Cuba, um, maybe not on the current ranking, mm -hmm. but in terms of reputation and, and history. And, and history, yes. most definitely so. Free kick one here by Antigua. We're approaching the half hour mark, and it will be struck from the left side. There are one, two, three, six red and black shirts and shorts in the area waiting on the deliver the jamaicans are matching them for numbers in fact they're outnumbered by the jamaicans let's see what it will be like it's high goalkeeper blake pulled away from his cage such a competent goalkeeper really really take offense to that bit of nudge in the back almost like a, a, a push there from the the antigua and barbuda number 10 Callum martin very strong, well, tall player. I would say actually the number 20 player, Akeem Thomas. Very sturdy player. Let's have a look at it again. Blake went up, had possession, and uh, Thomas on his way down, just nudging the Jamaican number one. But again, the, the, the Antiguans going for the dead ball, going for the high ball served as a diagonal in the area, and they're taller for the aerial press to try and get one inside or above. Um, Andre Blake and not getting it stopped the play so the counter would not be on. Jamaican starting another attack. Blake showing no if ill effects of that little notch that he took. Facial expression in the aftermath of it. You would get the impression that he was feeling some pain, but he's okay now. And uh, the Antigans have won for themselves a free kick. To be taken inside their own half. There's a man who was at the center of that little flashpoint just now, Thomas. Here they come, the Antiguans. Ball just played off there in Brown. They're still just in and around that little area. Thomas Tomorley can't get the shot off. The Jamaicans crowding and charging them down. Ah, oh, brilliant bit of play there from the Antiguan. You would see what he was trying to do, Clyde. He was trying yep. to get as much curl as possible mm -hmm. around that one. That's Miles Weston and one of those who, who apply his trade overseas. One of the teams that unusually has a lot of left footers on it. And this now is a big number nine who was their target man initially going wide on the right, but employing the same team tactic, using the left foot on the right side, trying to curl it in eerily and to sneak one past um, Andre Blake, but not today. Another throwing to Jamaica. Jamaica would, would want to, to move the ball with a little bit more space and a little bit faster if they can. But it's, it's the first game they have played together for a while and playing with a, a, a new formation that they haven't been in a 4 4 2. Here comes Antigua. Here they are, the Antiguans in the area. And uh, France is trying to prevent a Jamaican corner, uh, an Antiguan corner. Did well. And bangs the ball upfield. So the Benna boys once again finding themselves in the 18 yard air for Jamaica. He looks a very competent player and a player who is up for a fight for the language and action so far. So we're seeing a this game developing. It's not a, the greatest of games just yet. And a game that a goal or two would probably change the. The, the, the complexion of and the fortunes of the, we're yet to see anything really to shout about let's have a look at this again uh, francis had to pull back miles weston still giving the jamaican defender the run around it's a free kick from near side here's weston gonna get across right-footed behind for a corner this time from the near side. Malik Foster was very close to the play, so Foster coming all the way back to help out in defense. Corner number five to Antigua, just 34 minutes on the clock. Will they go for a short corner here, or will they go long? It just seems as if they're gonna strike this one in the 18 yard area. They've committed bodies, and, and the Jamaicans, like Antigua, have been disciplined defensive wise. Blake again pulled away from his cage and whenever he advances he's a sure pair of hands as you can get anywhere else a very good goalkeeper one of easily the best in the region and many people believe that if he gets an opportunity to strut his stuff on the bigger stages he'll definitely be distinguishing himself 
just the same. Free kick won by Antigua, Fabian Reed. Backing into the central defender. And he's apologizing to his teammate as well. Really just blocking him and moving the player's legs. And quite rightly, the infringing call against him. Zane Francis on call. As the victim on that occasion, if you could call it a victim. This is Mohamed, the goalkeeper, Brenton. Plays his football, I think, in Iceland. In the lower leagues, Theodore Whitmore. Scored two goals for Jamaica in that final game at the 1998 World Cup against Japan. Now in his fourth stint to his national coach. Here the Antiguans come again. There's a little battle there with Fabian McCarthy. Referee Peter says, cool it down. Let's make sure we get this thing done properly. Tactical game developing in the, the last 13 or 14 minutes, the Antiguans have come forward out of their shell and pushed into the midfield, pushed higher up, has gained five corners in their attacking press, but showing that they're looking to dominate early. Here's Kelly. And the shot just dipping. Didn't come down early enough for him, but that was enough to bring a bit of excitement to the crowd. Kelly, one of those players who given even a sniff will make use of it. And that's just his striker's instinct coming into play there. Combining with Fabian Reed on the right side and just playing it into the part, coming from the right flank inside, had a good long look at goal and put his left boot under the ball, just went a little over the crossbar and into touch. His third attempt on goal, Dane Kelly. Jamaica is back in possession. It's almost like a rehearsed play it's from Francis across to Lawrence. Almost always that's what the Jamaicans do when working it out of defense. This is Watson, the former captain. Went to Garvey Maceo High School here in Jamaica. Part of that Houston team which went to the MLS final. And Jermaine Taylor. Here's a shot. Chance for Jamaica. And finally, Malik Foster, the hot man for Jamaica, getting a rebound. Mohamed unable to hold on to that long range effort from. Well, the referee has got across. And let's see, he's waving. Clyde, what is he saying? The goalkeeper have, was could, impeded. Could have been offside. Probably Foster was offside when the ball came back to him if he was in that position before. But both the goalkeeper and Malik Foster showing signs of, of the injury. I think Foster kicked with his right foot as you see him. And he felt that pain is still feeling it. And the goalkeeper um, also came in contact, looked like somewhere across his, his, his chest or, or his head. And so not sure if it has been ruled as an offside but let's see from the replays, not in an offside position. When that shot is taken, that defender is behind him and now he follows onto the ball. So it wouldn't be an offside, probably just getting some treatment for the player as the goalkeeper's hands probably got hit um, with the right foot of Malik Foster. But just about the eye, probably the glancing blow, and that's what is ahead. Head, um, and the, the referee has to be clear and that's supreme. He hasn't signaled the goal as yet. It doesn't look like because the, the player could be injured and he's doing the right thing, make sure the player's right for it. But he spills the ball, Mohammed, and the foot hits, follow through, hits the hand and the shoulder, and the knee, as you see here, just goes across the cheek and probably um, has left an impression. And it would seem on goalkeeper Mohammed. Well, the referee sorting out the all important matter of making sure that the players are okay oh, well, yes. before dealing. Let's Quite have a look right. at it again. So, long range effort here, and Mohammed unable to hold on to this one. Bounces in front of him again. The hard pitch coming into play, hit in his chest and on his right arm, spilled in front of him. And on the doorstep, very quickly was a sharp um, Malik Foster to, to boot it home. And I think after both players get over their injuries, it will be signaled a goal, a goal to Jamaica. Run about the 38 or 39th minute. All right, so Malik Foster oh, still limping, paying the price for that goal. But it's a national shirt you're wearing, and these are 
situations that can happen. But as Clyde has been saying, he's going to be substituted. He can't take no no longer signals that that substitution. Yeah, can't take no longer no longer taking a part in this game. So Malik Foster, having scored for Jamaica, will uh, be taken off, and the referee has make, made sure that the Antiguans will take as much time as they can or as possible to make sure that their goalkeeper Brenton Mohammed is also taken care of. Clearly, taking a knock to the head. And so one will be substituted, the two players at the center of that flashpoint. It's not really a flashpoint, but the two players at the center of that bit of last bit of play before the, 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 the stoppage, one will be substituted, the other on the field. And the, the goal came just about 37, approaching 38 I, I minutes. About 38 minutes. There you go. So that's Malik Foster you're seeing there. And he'll be substituted, having scored for Jamaica. Second game in a row, he's scoring for Jamaica. So third, game. A third game. Third game. It was a practice game yeah, before that's the right. South he Korea also game. Scored there. There right. you go. So he's in a hot streak for the Jamaicans. And the goalkeeper, Mohammed will be able to continue. Not so for Malik Foster. And uh, in time, you'll see the scoreline at the top left-hand corner of the screen change to show that Jamaica, they are leading this game by one goal to nil. Well, let's see what's happening here because well it's not spotted in the middle of the park no so that is very concerning so what did the referee call for because we didn't see we, an offside. We, 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 we haven't seen the referees mm -hmm. either way he's still looking at the player and now he's looking to make sure all the blood is off his his gloves and his clothing and he's back and he's okay and they're walking forward which suggests well the ball is there and the referee is leaving it there Oh, let's see what's happening here because it does seem as if the goalkeeper well, will restart the play in his area and if that's so no well I'm, be a goal. I'm, I'm watching the officials they're walking to the center as two the assistant mm -hmm. on the right he's walking to the center but the ball is left in a penalty area it's not a goal. and uh, well that's not where the player was offside either mm -hmm. when that shot was taken he was in the d <laughs> outside so yeah, so yeah. i think that error being made by the officials here yes well for whatever it is is it the game is still goalless? That bit of incident took place on minute 38, so we're going to have an extended first half. But uh, Foster is back on the field. Yes. It's just drama. So Foster has retaken the field. Right on cue, here he is back involved in the game almost immediately. We did see a member of the Jamaican bench signaling yes, for a substitution Lamar to take him off. Signal furiously. Yes. And that no doubt was on the instructions of the medical team. There were about two or three of them there with him, so. Clearly, he has recovered, um, or would seem to have been recovered with the halftime, just <laughs> probably about six or seven minutes to come. They'll be having a look, and Jamaica would want to seize the moment and get a goal ahead nonetheless. Well, this game was crying out for something. Well, he got something, or really wanted, and had a legitimate goal. And I'm sure maybe during the halftime, we will try to find out what the, 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 the situation was with that ball that hit the back of the net and ruled off. Here is Francis finding himself in the area. He has scored for Jamaica before. In fact, he has scored in the Gold Cup as well. So he knows exactly what it is to score for the national team. Anyway, the Jamaicans are back in possession. This is Fabian McCarthy to read. Another Fabian. Reed running off that one. He knows how to play in and around that in the pocket because that's his preferred position. Now then, so back to normal if you like. Ladell Richie winning the ball. Turn it over to O'Neill Fisher. Here's McCarthy in the middle of the park. Looking for Lawrence. Lawrence is backing away. Should have come to the football. Was he so short or was it a situation where he should have attacked the ball? Anyway, here the Antiguans come once more. This is available to the left and right. Will he go for a shot? No. Now we should look for a cross in the 18-yard area. No, he's trying to go one way, then the next. Fisher doing a good job of shadowing him and forcing him further wide. And in the end, it results only in a goal kick for the Jamaican. Zane Francis Angol is a player. Big fellow. Uh, as to many seems to be uh, two, three, or four inches above an Average height of the Jamaicans, burly in stature, and their their physical presence is standing. And the Jamaicans more fleet of foot, and with the ball skill, it would seem at the moment having the better of the ground game and the movement, particularly by Foster and Fabian Reed from the in and around the the the, the area, is giving them a problem as the Antiguans build. Here they come once more. The Antiguans sliding tackle. They're just in front 
of the box by Fabian McCarthy. Lift to fight another day and fight on the R. Center of attack is focused over on the left. And they're sharing of the football in and around the area. Finding these nice little pockets. Looking a bit comfortable, more comfortable if you like. This is Dory. Clearly one of their leaders. Not the captain, but he's really has, having some influence on his team here. McCarthy on the ground, but still fighting. Fabian Reed just heading it off. So it's 19 to 20. Lars seeing a lot of the football. He's made this side of the field his own. Reed just playing the give and go. Lawrence has Williams available to him. Nice flick there by the Jamaican number 22. It's slowly but efficiently building up. Wow, good move. A left foot in effort across there from Lawrence. Ah, almost turned in his own goal. And the referee is pointing over for the corner. And just now, some anxious moments there for Angol. Here it is again. Lawrence with a left footed cross. And it had the Antiguan came defender and the ball away, and it and came out faster. It. But it looks like the again, the I see that one. Making, uh, a little bit of an error. The the first corner being awarded to Jamaica to Jamaica because Lawrence, Lawrence is, down. is down on the field. Seemingly time is tying his boots. It's changing. Does he need a change of boots? Because see one or two of the Jamaican players being all over the place. Let's see what he's going to be doing here. Taking off those bright red. Yes, he's going to have a change of boot. And I'm surprised that it didn't come a little earlier because quite a few of the players have been slipping. Of course, we had rain earlier. And it seems as if we're still having some, you know. The pitch is hard. The pitch is hard, no doubt, from the cricket. And they probably rolled it to try to get the little even on it. The, the top of the surface is hard under the grass. So slippage and probably um, There's a the corner. twisting. Ball in the area. Watson forcing it back. Reed. Williams to Reed. Watson. Jamaican just playing the ball from one end of the one side of the field to the next, using up the width of the field, the Jamaicans, as they try to go forward once more behind Dory and letting in the Jamaican striker the very hot Malik Foster Mohammed right there in the right place at the right time not a great deal of power or venom behind that shot but the important thing Clyde is that Malik is finding himself in these little pockets as the Antiguans look to respond to that latest Jamaican foray into their 18-yard area with one of their own and calm and cool was Sean Francis on that occasion yeah and Jamaicans just could you know, no true fish at the half line with a lot of space and time here, but more Antigua behind the ball than Jamaica's coming for. He turns it back and across. But Mario Williams drives a left foot shot wide of the target. So three minutes of added time, and we're in the third of those are three minutes. Dusty was if we're going to the break, as you were, status quo. And that's Mario Williams. He has really put in a good first half. And... Uh, the Antiguans have been resolute in the fence. The Jamaicans at one stage had them on the run, but the Antiguans responded with, what, four or five corners? We take the field for the start of half number two in this international friendly between Jamaica and Antigua and Barbuda. So we're just here, just having a chatter. And, and those top to six um, Caribbean, um, Costa Rica, Panama, um, Trinidad, Panama, and Diego. Right, Diego, and, and Honduras, right? Yeah. So, so, so those are the top six, and Trinidad is in that yes, because they, because they got to the hexagonal right. round. Um, so Trinidad's um, 
World Cup forays of late haven't been bad, you know, because they've been getting into that hexagonal round right. quite often these days. It's not becoming in, in many ways they've replaced Jamaica yes, in, yes, in, in, in in that yes, in that effect becoming commonplace for them now. So we're, 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 as we say, we're waiting on the start of half number two. It's goalless at the moment. Uh, the Jamaicans shaded the first half. I mean, in terms of clear cut opportunities, but the Antiguans will tell you that if you look at the stat sheet, it will tell you that offensively they got not only five corners, but they got four on the bounce within this a short space of time, maybe right. a two or three minute period. Mm -hmm. So they would kind of draw some confidence from that as well. Um, the Jamaicans are, are, are mixed the team in terms of the locals and uh, the, 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 the players playing overseas. Six and foreign based players, largely out of North America. Right. Um, O'Neill Fisher, Kemar yeah. Lawrence, Javon Watson, Andre Blake, Andre Blake Javon Watson, yes, Romario um, Williams, Francis, and Dane Kelly. Right, and Dane, so seven. Yes. Right. And the, the players from the local leagues were playing, Ladiel Richie from Mobe, there's also Fabian McCarthy from Huey, Portmore is Malik Foster, and Arnett Gardens is Fabian Reed. So, um, well. Interesting mix there, and, um, and, and interesting also to see Sean Francis played in the left attacking position, played in the left back position, um, and now playing in, in the, the left central defensive position, and so he's showing his versatility, much like Javon Watson, and showing some leadership, and, and good to see. He hasn't had any difficulties so far, mm -hmm. so he's adapting well. So we hope you're enjoying our coverage wherever you are uh, around the world. We're still waiting on half number two. My name is Wayne Walker, and of course, the unmistakable voice and face for you, the viewers of Clyde Giardini, yeah, one of our key members of the Harborview team. Who, and by the way, Clyde, let me just say personally, congratulations to you on getting into the playoffs. Oh, well, not very right. easy Coach, to do. Coach Ricardo, Bibi Gardner, yes. Fabian Taylor, and, and the rest and, of you guys. Right, and you're Neil part Smith. of the whole team. Right, right. right. It's not very easy to get into. It was no. just one of the most amazing and closely monitored and run and it was just too competitive and it took the last day to get three of the six in right that 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 wave of five or six club <laughs> coming to the four for the last six or seven weeks is unusual mm -hmm. um usually the the top four or the top two is determined just about christmas early january or by the end of january yeah. and portmore did well to get there and it did well and then had to had to hold their own coming through to to stave off some pressure as we were looking to to join back our feed and the right. jamaicans at sabina park welcome back just in time to see mohammed uh, having a bit of Awkward moment there. Just in front of him was a Jamaican attacker, and the ball could have really, really done dangerous things to him. And uh, luckily for the Antiguan, if you're a supporter of the Antigua team, he managed to hold on to that immediately. So welcome back. This is half number two in this international friendly between Jamaica and Antigua and Barbuda. This is the number 10 player, Callum Martin, the midfielder, cheekily playing the ball forward. Well, the Jamaican defense reading quite nicely. And... Uh, Fisher trying to work out of a very tight spot there, managing to do so. Here is Dory from Antigua. Here they are in the middle of the park. Good sharing of the football until the Jamaicans intervene. Fabian Reed is used to playing close to goals, but not his own goal. And here's Kelly. Lots of space on the right. Will he get the cross in? Yes, he does. Ooh. The ball deflected into the back of the net. And Jamaica this time for sure. They have taken the lead with just about four minutes in the second half. And what a calamitous piece of defending by the Antiguans. Dane Kelly's shot came across. Clearly was looking for a Jamaican player to run onto that one. And we'll just like to confirm who that unfortunate defender was. But whoever he was... He deflected the ball in the back of the net. This is Kelly, the number 16 for Jamaica, looking across. And he was looking to put it on a plate for Romario Williams. And the unfortunate player, Akeem Thomas, who was involved in a bit of a bust up if you like, with uh, Andre Blake late in the second half. This time, he has assisted in Jamaica taking the lead. It's Jamaica 1, Antigon Barbuda nil. Dane Kelly would take a lot of credit for that goal, had a lot of time, had a lot of space, and, and picked. Oh, second time we've seen Romario Williams do that. He should be cautioned, kicking away the ball after, and duly cautioned. Romario Williams knows much better than that, but a little bit of the frustration shown there by the big number 22. Um, they call him muscle. And, and um, Dane Kelly, his, his teammate, former teammate at Charleston 
Ashton Battery, pick that right-sided cross, bounced at the near post uncomfortably across the waistline of the defender, brought him to his knees. Romario Williams was on his shoulder, and Malik Foster chasing from the far side. Goalkeeper Mohamed stranded at the, the center of the field, and that one, early goal, just what Jamaica wanted to go ahead. And just what the game needed as well. It turns out a bit more, I'm sure, because they are started feeling very, very comfortable and about life here in, in, in Kingston. And the Jamaicans have hit them and hit them hard, um, assisted, of course, by the Antiguans. Four minutes into the second half, and the Jamaicans have taken the lead on an own goal from Akeem Thomas. A throw into the Antiguans, and they would want to now believe that they have to open up and come forward a bit more. A nice crowd building up there in the George Headley stand. Yeah, looks like the crowd has grown from, from what the start of the game. And just blocking Theodore Whitmore of uh, both hams wide open. It's asking pretty good. The, the, the official what's happening. This is the third um, bit of contact that um, Dane Kelly has been in since the start of the second half. One just about the half line, just as the, the half began. And then he was given a lot of time and space a few minutes down the right side and then miscontrolled and looks like he's not the worst for wear, but just indicating that he's been blocked and barged. Again, the physical present that was uncalled for and duly um, penalized by the official. A good opportunity for Jamaica to deliver from Zane, the dead ball. Zane Angol, Francis Angol, the player there, the culprit, free kick by Kemar Taxi Lawrence from the near side. A tomb on wall. Constructed the referee picking, it's instructing the players. Listen, this is 10 yards, remain where you are while I go across to make sure that things are okay. So, a number of Jamaican shirts are in the area waiting on this delivery. Dory there in the number five for Antigua, not playing a bad game at all. And uh, Taxi Lawrence, known for that brilliant goal against Mexico, the ball swing across into the area behind for a corner to Jamaica. No, it's a goal kick, says the referee picking. Corner. corner, actually. Yep. So, it's a corner. Mohammed, looking as if he has been to the wars and back. And that bit of injury came on minute 38 in the game when and Jamaica thought... And that bit thought, of injury win, I, I think, is what they call the goal back for. I think they called yes. it for a foul. Which I initially thought it was. <laughs> which, Here's a corner which taken short. Oh, shot by Fabian Reed. That's what he's known for. That is bread and butter play. Striking at goal as opposed to be playing the ball to players in and around the defensive midfield area. Been employed in an unfamiliar position, if you like, Fabian Reed by coach Theodore Whitmore. And his club coach, Jerome Waite. Callum Martin. Thomas. Now the number 10, a skillful player, Martin. Still in Martin. Getting away from Fisher. Doing very well, Martin. An opportunity for Antigua. A shot charge on there by Watson, coming back all the way in defense. And now Fisher can get the Jamaicans out of this little crowded area. Ball played behind Kelly, but he had the presence of mind to wait on the flow of the ball to get back to him. The Tegans are physically more imposing than the Jamaicans. And they've used that to good effect. Here they are coming forward once more. A long range effort there from Quinton Griffith, the captain. But Andre Blake, a striking orange outfit, black gloves, more than equal to the task. The Jamaican captain and the Jamaican number one. 54 minutes gone, and the Jamaican's goal came just four minutes into the second half. A deflection from Akeem Thomas from a shot taken by Dane Kelly. Lawrence is forced to turn the ball back. Getting a bit of assistance here from Sean Francis. He knows only one way. to strike them long. This time Reed has intercepted. And immediately looking for the quickest and earliest of passes. Here's Kelly. Sharing the ball nicely with Williams. Now the ball needs to get back in the area. It does. Chance here. And uh, <laughs> Foster. Again. Foster. It is the second time that Foster is trying that. Right back here. Yes. Well, inspired by Leon Bailey, you think? Well, Leon did something like that in the German Bundesliga recently. But Foster has found himself in some really good positions, Clyde. Right, good positions, but 
Um, here it is again. He's going ahead of the play, which is why on the boat occasion he has to be, he's been found wanting and coming back out, probably going a little bit too far into those positions, even though his, his innovations ended up with a Makil um, Ramario Williams, number 22, making way for Jamil Hardware, number seven, for the reggae boys. So Jamaica making its first substitution, and it has come 10 minutes in the second half. So Romario Williams didn't have a bad game. And uh, the number seven, Jamil Hardware on. And uh, also Fabian Reed is going to be substituted as well. Peter Lee Vassal, and number 17, coming on. The Harborview midfielder, formerly of Cornwall College, Peter Lee Vassal. This is for season, is it season? Yes. They do. Yes, it yeah. is. It's really having a very good Premier League football season. It started off inauspiciously, but it's really, really grew into the Premier League are now playing a very, very vital role and the run of Harborview to the top six in the Premier League. Mohamed just beckoning to his players to go forward. And the lights are on brightly here at Sabina Park. And Tegan's now having to chase the game. That occasion, though, at the start, Malik Foster had enough time to turn. Not sure if he knew how much time he had. Not a great deal of time. Here's Jamil Hardware trying to call for it. It fell to Peter Lee Vassal running away from him and the Antigans can come forward now it says they're skillful little number 10 you could tell he's a good player Colin Martin and immediately the Antigans have pushed out of their defensive shell and that counter just a few minutes ago that was played diagonally into the part of Peter Lee Vassal just intercepted uh, Malik Foster coming on the left and wide which is the area I like him more when he has space and he has much more movement and much more a uh, larger area to explode in and out of and got a brush across the, his face looks like across the jaw and the referee pity is it just looking closely at him and ball being struck hit him on the face on the arm and into the face and that was what we saw on the replay Malik Foster the number nine for the Jamaica here's Antigua Watson Can walking, but he plays with his heart. Peter Lee Vassal heavily policing him and Kimar Taxi Lawrence. Both of them harbor view connection. One a current player, one a pass player. Good work there by Peter Lee Vassal. And now the Jamaicans can come forward. So Peter Lee Vassal on his national senior team debut. Number of young players getting opportunities in the various national teams when they are called. And Peter Lee Vassal, the very latest of them. Here's Javon Watson in the middle of the park. Playing it off to Jamil Hardware. Hardware's surveying his options, looking for passing passes. And he picks out Fisher on the near side. So the Jamaicans are shearing the, the ball around very nicely. Just now, uh, McCarthy trying to make a defense splitting pass. Didn't quite come off. And the Antiguans just playing around with danger in their area. This is a player I have a great deal of time for. Dowry. Very distinct with his ginger color. Here, very comfortable in the football is Dory. Nice turn, very good turn actually by Weston. Easily read by Kamara Taxilar and saw it all, all the way. And before the initial pass was made, he crept into that position in anticipation. The forward saw it and backed off. And the, the, the attacker still played it. And the slow, methodical passing of Jamaica at the back, Ladale Ritchie in control, the number four. Tigo Bay United spends a brilliant ball up front, just a little overcooked. But go, you have to give credit to the goalkeeper for anticipating yes. that. Mohamed left his goal in a flash, and his Inside. sense of anticipation was just brilliant. That made a difference Ooh. because Foster was right there. And in front of the referee, he was kicked over here on the yellow card. Been shown here to the lead, Richie. So, caution. I think the second Jamaican caution. Second, Romaro Williams yes. got one for kicking away the ball, and he was replaced. He's yes, just there. Um, here is a replay again through the legs, slap across the chest. Hello, remember who I am. Um, as both players introduce themselves to each other, but just before that, they the um similar play in the first minute, they the the first play. Oh, and he's bleeding, so he's, he has to go off the pitch as well. Miles Weston, Miles that's the name Weston. of the player, right? The number nine. Well, he's gonna remain on the field, but I, I didn't think the referee probably saw that he, he spat a lot of blood there. So, so uh, what I if the blood isn't visible? So he spat it, so it's, it's not visible. Right, but but it it probably is. But his back was to the referee, mm -hmm. both when he spat 
and, 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 and away from him. So probably not seeing Blake catches easily. Just remembering the, the goal that Dane Kelly scored early in the game against Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Similar pass from Ladil yes, Ritchie. Sure. Turned on the chest and pivoted and struck inside the near post. So we're on the hour mark. And the Jamaicans still holding that one little advantage given to them four minutes into the second half. It was a long effort. Well, it's a cross from Dane Kelly and uh, the ball deflected by Akeem Thomas into his own goal. And that's how Jamaica is leading us. Dale Ritchie with another again. long pass. He's gone for those on a number of occasions. Here is Peter Lee Vassal. He took a shove in the back. Not enough to grab the attention of the referee. It's a physical game here been developed. The Antiguans are going to be fighting the Jamaicans tooth and nail because they have the physical conditioning. This is Peter Lee Vassal. Not the biggest of players, very skillful doing silky. Here's Kimar Lawrence. Still going down the channel. Needs to get a cross in. Willie. Yes, it comes across. And the goalkeeper and Dowie almost bouncing into each other. But Mohammed is a little live wire, Mohammed, you know. Making sure that this time his defender doesn't get in front of him. The last time it happened, deflected into the goal. He was quick off the mark and getting to that ball, not making that um, repeat itself. Kemar Lawrence there curls a left footer, bouncing inside the six-yard box. Dane Kelly right at the doorstep. But Jamil Hardware just doing a one-two down the side and, and teeing up the overlapping um, Kemar Lawrence as number 21, Cardinal um, Benbo from Waterhouse comes in for the nippy Malik Foster, who had another good game in the national shirt for Jamaica. So, Coach Theodore Whitmore just ringing the changes. So that's the third change of the afternoon, well, of the evening. And uh, nightfall here at Sabina Park with a nice, a decent crowd in the George Headless stand. Still not getting a decent shot of the North stand, but you just get the impression that this would, must be encouraging. They're not playing one of these so-called big teams and not playing in Jamaica for a little while. They're playing at Sabina Park. They're playing on the back of Boys and Girls Championships. So, so many things that could have gone against having a good crowd here, and they're having one. Must be encouraging to the Jamaica Football Federation. So if you're watching on Ready TV, or you're watching on JFF Live, we say, well, welcome to you. And if you're a fan of the Jamaica national team, then you must be very happy. If you are a fan of Antigua, then you'll be ho hoping that they get back on level terms. Here they are though, with possession. This is Dory. He has to his left Zane Francis Angol. Angol having to get her to be hurried to get onto that one before Benbo got there ahead of him. So that goal now has pulled the Antigua defensive network into more open well, spaces and, and are now trying to play into with a more open and an and even team with more persons forward trying to respond. Peter Lee Vassal on the left needs to protect that ball much better. Still has it turned over and goes wide right to Onil Fisher. Good control by Fisher. Trying to give Callum Martin the run around. Oh, good. <laughs> nice dip here from Fabian McCarthy. He's using his body to send Good to see this. I, I, I want to oh, see this way. way. Fabian McCarthy linking up and, and getting much more touches of the ball in that era. Turned over by Javon Watson. Here comes the counter. McCarthy. It's calmly and easily controlling the ball. Very calm on the ball. Very self-assured. Um, and Jamil Hardware will add to that position, looking for a pass to penetrate. Here's Peter Lee Vassal in the middle of the park room. The number 17 just came onto the field a couple of minutes ago. Let's see what Lawrence will do. Will he get across in? No, he plays it to Jamil Hardware. Hardware, nice, playing that ball into that other pocket. The Jamaicans looking intricate in this little area. And of course, blocked for a corner. Oh, no, no. And Mohammed calling for some assistance. Bleeding Something again. got into his eyes. Bleeding the blood, again. The blood is getting into his eyes. Of course, he suffered that injury on minute 38 in that little uh, thing with uh, Malik Foster and now the blood is seeping under that thing and it's getting into his eyes and he's frantically calling for his bench to assist the referee is obliged he's asking where are you guys he's now telling the medical personnel what's happening to him so we're gonna have a little hold up here ah what's that you putting on me I'm a little uncomfortable with that play once more this, this is, is the goal. goal and so Dane Kelly here you see him looking across he's looking for a Williams and goodness graciously Akeem Rock Thomas.
trying to get the ball away before it got to Williams succeeded only in deflecting the ball. He is dejected. And look at him. He's a lonely man there. It's a lonely difficult, place he's sitting Difficult there. for a defender. Had to come yeah. to the ball, try to cut off the ball, showed some, some urgency in getting to the ball first. Knew Ramara Williams was lurking on his shoulder. Knew his goalkeeper had to be holding, tried to get his stomach across the ball just to protect it. But he, it, it had him going at cross purposes, deflected from his stomach and into the far post beyond his goalkeeper. The only goal of the game so far, unofficially, minute 49. So we're waiting for the restart. The goalkeeper having some issues. Well, the medical personnel came on. So the Antiguans are having a chat about it. Um, maybe talking about, give it a chance now, finally, to have a chat about that goal. And the Jamaicans chatting amongst themselves as well. And they say, we're looking at a wide shot there of the Georgia list. And I can't say enough how impressive this crowd is when you put everything into context. It's making coach Theodore Whitmore uh, inquiring about something and uh, just relaying what he heard from someone on the field to the bench. And Mohammed is still down on his backside. I'm sure he's going to be up in a bit. They've removed the bandage. Will they? And because he's a goalkeeper, yes. Wayne, they'll, they'll, they'll take, take as much time as possible to make sure. Time yes. to, to do, but he's looking, he's looking menacingly across to the bench, and I think he thinks they want to substitute him, but he wants to stay in the game. He's running across to his bench. I think he'll probably try and get some more attention, or he's coming off the field. But he's going to the doctor, so he's trying to see if he can stop the bleeding um, quickly to get back on and good to see the Jamaican contingent they're at the Jamaican um, bench and it's the Jamaican medical team assisting good to see the sportsmanship yeah. there this is sports not war so we'll just see Theodore Imor seeing the funny side of it in the meantime he's getting ready to make another substitution we could see the player getting ready just you know, seeing through. looks like Javain Brown he's your player from Harborview all right so there he is and he's also been having a decent enough season in the Premier League. Had a good season for Kingston College. Warren Bart, the goalkeeper coach, who should know about these things. So, getting a chance to see up close now the fans as they make this. Wearing Sunday, their colors, showing support. Good to see. Sunday evening. Children, coming up male, to have a female, a good mix. A good little cross section from that little snippet of one small era of the stand. Good to see. So, both medical teams working in tandem. To make sure that goalkeeper Mohammed, so the fans are out. Um, it's a good Sunday evening to be out watching football, and I'm sure they're enjoying their day out. If not the game, that's a great game, but a watchable game if you like. And goalkeeper Mohammed has gone back into his cage. We'll have a restart, and we restart with a corner. And the game was held up for about four and a half, maybe five minutes. So that will be added by referee John uh, Tippy. So they've gone across now to effect the change. In fact, Antigua is making a substitution, taking off their number nine player. This is certainly the number 23. Um, that's Joshua Parker. Joshua Parker coming in. Joshua Parker was the player who was complaining about the middle of the field being very uh, hard. He's one of their English base players. I think he plays over in England as well. He replaces Karen Richards, the number so, eight. So Richards is out, midfielder. So Parker, his first piece of action is to defend against a Jamaican corner. To be struck by Kemar Lawrence from over the far side. Dane Killy has gone close as if he wanted it to be a short one, but Lawrence says, no, I'm going to put it in 18-yard area. There are a number of you in there. Get onto the end of this one if you can. It's low. Peter Lee Vassal. And goalkeeper Mohamed bringing an end to that passage of play. A goal kick to Antigua. Another infringement on the play. Referee Pitti saw something. Here comes the substitution for Jamaica. So, Javain Brown, Kingston College captain. Lady Richie, I'm number four player. coming out. So, it's like for like. Yes. Kind and, of. and it would be interesting to see where, where Javain goes if he goes into the middle of the park and plays there, which it looks like, as you say, like for like that he will do. And O'Neill Fisher will continue is attacking Perez down the side, or they'll bring O'Neill Fisher inside, or Fabian McCarthy. Right. Let's see what they will do there. All right, so the Antiguans in the middle of the park, Ben Ball there, skipping away from that one. Right, quite rightly so, a hard <laughs> surface, and he was a bit late. This is Dowry. Dowry. 
Here's Parker. Kicked over in front of the referee. Really won by the Antigua and Barbuda team. Antigua coming off a victory over Dominica on Wednesday by three goals to two. And they'll be playing Jamaica again close to the end of April. The Jamaicans will be heading down the Eastern Caribbean as they look for games to get them ready for the League of Nations. Skipping there was Ben Bow. He too is in a rich scoring yes, form. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. In the for Waterhouse. Three straight games. Scoring for Waterhouse is Jamil Hardware. Player who knows what it is to play overseas, both in the college and in the club situation. Here he is again. One moment he passes the ball. It's a good shot coming in from Jamil Hardware. Again. again. Mohamed. He's been spilling them. These long range efforts. He's not doing well with them. And it was as a result of a long range effort and a spell from him. That resulted in that injury to his head and doesn't seem comfortable with those powerhouses coming from right from distance. Callum Martin, Blake again. He's Easy such catch. a certain pair of hands when he goes up. He played 71 minutes, but please add five minutes to that because we had a hold up with the goalkeeper just in case you are joining us for the first time. And we must be mindful of that. Good evening to you wherever you are. And because you may be watching from places where it's now morning, we'd just like to say welcome to our coverage here on Ready TV and, of course, on JFF Live. It's an international friendly at Sabina Park. It's Jamaica versus Antigua and Barbuda. Jane Brown getting his first real touch of the ball. This is Fisher. Gets the ball in the area. Mohammed should have absolutely no difficulties. In fact, that one went right down his zone. But immediately the Jamaicans get possession back. Uh, a, a more free-flowing passing game from the Jamaicans. Interchanging, but the ball moving a little bit more assurance and confidence. The goal would have would have helped that. But I just think the intention has been better. Searching for the long pass. Ben Bokan get to it before it bounces into touch. J Javain Watson just, just looking to, to get that ball there. Number 21, substitute Cardell Belmo. Very fine talent is Cardell Benbo. And just now, suddenly out of nowhere, he's rediscovered the form that we know he can produce. And he's really, really touching the heights for his local club here in Jamaica Waterhouse. Yeah, the Antiguans, they come forward once more. They are just by, down by a goal to nil. And uh, hand on the shoulder of the youngster. The referee clearly didn't see that. The Antiguans got away with that one. Twisting this way and that. Parker. The thick of the action. Whistle on the plate. No, it's going to be putting his. Mm -hmm. I think his they mouth. expected it. Hard surface, players sliding. Benbo sitting, getting up slowly. Jamaican showing some, some measure of confidence, composed on the ball, playing with self assurance and the physicality of the hustling Antigua Barbudans getting trying to get themselves into the game had a little sniff there when the shoulder on the plate wasn't called the ball went behind the defense Javien Brown was quick to cover and mop up Kemar Taxelarens looks for the passing sequence to to get them going here comes Antigua once again this is Parker wearing the number 23 he's turning away from two Jamaican markers Thomas overcooking overcooking that one to, he's trying to Get his number 13 player to Morley Thomas going. So it was from one Thomas to the next. So Thomas was just to Morley Thomas, just trying to say to his teammate where he should have put that one. It was overcooked. And now the Jamaican start another of their many attacks. This is Fisher. It's really grown into this national team. And he says it doesn't matter if they're playing against St. Hugh's Prep. He wants to wear the national colors once he's called upon to do so. And he's kind of showing the kind of commitment. That you Ooh, want to see here he is right. just as i talked about him he's now in a little of a thing with the zane francis angle angle doesn't back down from a fight it's yeah. an aggressive customer he's been shown and that the antiguans kind. trying to get under the jamaican skin starting to apply a little bit more physicality when when they need to and when they don't need to just trying to irritate the jamaicans and see if they can benefit from a mistake or a moment of brilliance of push players forward for this and uh, Head off an Antiguan player. That's ball is still, a, still alive until now. The referee spotting the tall Akeem Thomas. He's been involved in almost everything. That own goal, he was a part of it. Mm -hmm. There was a shove in the back of goalkeeper Andre Blake that caused him a bit of a pain. He was involved in that as well. So he has been in, in a bit of everything. Um, Akeem Thomas, he's having an all-action tonight. Again. 
And just now intercepting that one. Tiga Wait. trying to keep this one from going for a corner. No, I don't think they've succeeded. It does. And it's a corner to the Jamaican. So we've played about 75 minutes. As I say, when you take into consideration that it's 15 minutes remaining, maybe count 20 and possibly more because the game was held up for about five minutes. And because we know you join us all the time, we want to welcome you to our coverage here on Ready TV and also JFF Live. Corner to the Jamaicans from over on the far side. There are five four Jamaican shirts in the area waiting on this one. They're outnumbered, yes, by the Antiguans, as you'd expect. It looks like McCarthy will take it right-footed this time, curving inward. Because they're defending. Low mm. corner. It's going to see a disappointing mm. one. But the first touch of Dale Kelly letting him down tremendously. He really, really should have done better with that first touch. He's remonstrating with himself and at the same time apologizing to his teammate. Really should have done better with yeah, that one. Yeah, I think, again, probably just a surface getting to Dane Kelly there. This is the second time did it early on the right wing before he, he, he treaded that cross that led to the goal and just miscontrolling the ball a little hard on the pitch and not getting the feel that he's probably used to. So the Jamaicans are holding on to this vital 1-0 lead. Benbow unable to keep hold of the football and now Bori has left his defensive area trying to now start help to start this Antiguan move. This is Parker immediately releasing the ball very very quickly. It's very important. Antigua the dimension of attack switch from left to right. A sniff of the ball there was Dane Kelly not quite getting it and this is Parker he's been heavily involved since coming onto the field just about four or five minutes ago and here's Jamaica a charge been led here by Javon Watson. Hacker, still Hacker, team it up on the area. Here's Peter Lee Vassal looking for the one two. Vassal! The ball is trickling to the left of right goal keeper. Mohamed Stradid on a corner to Jamaica. The two youngsters, two substitute, Benbo and Vassal combining just at the top of the box here. Uh, Watson treads it. Vassal wins it, pokes it, goes around the back pocket and it's overhead passes and again that man in central defense plays it goalward but beside his goal this time, corner number four in the second half to Jamaica, corner number six overall and it will be from the right side. Kemar Taxilar is left footed. So corner to Jamaica from the near side and uh, Giving him the option of a short corner is Jamil Hardware, and he takes that option. But the, the ball, ball went, went outside. The ball went into touch. And uh, Lawrence is telling the assistant referee that no, you're, you're incorrect. But it does seem as if the assistant referee has got that one spot I on. I think he got his spot on. And Lawrence still not happy with the decision. I think he's a, a little disappointed with himself. Played it quickly, tried to sneak it, and I think it went over the line and back into play. And the official was right on the spot, called it immediately. Substitution looks like Marvin Morgan coming on the number 18 player for Jamaica. Right, so who, who was our number 10? So Fisher is number 10? Close by. Probably is the wrong number they are holding up. It is, and it does seem Oh, it, it is for the. I think he, the, the official had the, the wrong number up. So the Antigua Barbuda team will be making a change and they're going to take off Callum Martin. That's their number 10 player. And they're going to insert the number 14. We'll tell you who that is in a bit. Eugene Kerwan. Eugene Kerwan. But yes, the Jamaicans will make another substitute. Marvin Morgan, another hot player in the Premier League. Another of those players who is ready to really break out and grasp the opportunities given to him. He's been really, really hot in the Premier League this season. So he'll be shortly inserted. And, uh, and it's a ticking away for Antigua. So, Javon Watson is going to be taken out. And in goes Marvin Morgan, making the number 18. So the changes have been wrong by the coach. Parker looks a good player. And he looks as if he does a lot on the physical side as well. Antigua gets a free kick. Banged over on the right side. Both teams almost having a different look to them yes. as opposed to the ones that we started with. Smaller, nippier, speedier, younger Jamaicans coming on in the second half. And the, the, the bigger Antigas continue to come on. But is Jamaica looking to try to accelerate with the ground pace winning themselves another corner? We had five corners in the first half to Antigua. Now, so far, we have five corners for Jamaica in the second half. So another corner for Jamaica over on the far side. Marvin Morgan winning that corner for Jamaica. Mohamed 
He's trying to shout the instructions to his teammates. Pick up the players, he says. Go short because the Jamaicans are having this habit now of going short. So that is why the number 13 has been deployed to Marley Thomas. But Kimari Lawrence likes to strike them long and in the area, just like he did now. Top of the area, Peter Lee Russell. Ooh, what a was... shot. And Mohammed was equal to the task. Very, very good shot there from Peter Lee Vassal on top of the 18 yard area. And very good save by Mohammed. That, that stout right footed drive coming through a crowd of about four or five players on the ground and was well held on the line by Mohammed, who, who then launched a quick counter attack. Antigua with possession. Long ball. It's laboring. To get to that one, Weston got to it, he did. The ball just bouncing innocuously in the 18 yard area. Weston still though with possession. He finds Parker. Parker's been doing mostly good things for Antigua since coming onto the field, and he's over, he's all over the park. And I just wonder why he was on the bench. Maybe that's a lot of players play better coming off the bench, but his performance so far has not been a bad one. Was he able to keep that in? Yes, no, it wasn't. Goal and kick. It's a goal kick now to the Jamaicans. Let's have a look there at this corner here by Kimar with the Taxi Lawrence and the shot there from Peter Lee Vassal. Having the confidence to strike that one right footed, but a great deal of power. The goalkeeper was in, in a good position. It was one of those easy saves, but you've got to give the young player on debut a lot of credit for having the confidence to drop in that little uh, busy pocket and getting off a clean shot. Very encouraging. So we are now 81 minutes into the game. And the minutes are ticking away for Antigua. Sure, if 20 Jamaicans before the start of the game, or maybe even 20 Antiguans, you'd have more saying that the Jamaicans were favorites and pr probably would have gone on to win the game. Well, that's what's happening at the moment. The Jamaicans are winning the game by a goal to nil. Very good move here. Dean Kelly. Looking to increase this tally. Here's Morgan, skipping away. Morgan, well, he went for the shot instead of getting the ball, trying to pick someone up. Maybe not a bad decision. Probably a little bit selfish. Um, ben Bo had come just in front of him and um, Peter Lee Vassar just behind. And it seems like they're trying to play short, um, snappy combinations. But he went for the glory and just easily saved. Here comes Antigua. And he was one of those who got a goal against Saudi Arabia. Marvin Morgan, the two goals that Jamaica scored. There's a ball coming across the goal. The defender is dealing with it quite well. O'Neill Fisher, very calm under the pressure there. Yes. Fisher coming back. This That's is. what I was talking about, Wayne. Um, simple um, knitting of passes, simple combination Phil passes. Hardware going forward. Phil Hardware, Jamaica almost getting a second goal. Jamil Hardware finding himself, weaving his way into the 18 yard area. And just now, a bit of panic in the Antiguan defense, but Jamil Hardware, a player who knows exactly what it takes to weave his way into defensive areas just now, he showed us that. And with a bit more luck, maybe he would have gotten onto the score sheet. He's also scoring with a bit of regularity for the national team as well. He got one against yes, Trinidad is. and Tobago, which yeah. was a brilliant one. Here the Antiguans come forward, and that one just slightly overcooked. And a goal kick to Jamaica. Yeah, and he has gotten two goals recently. And since he has come on, here's the number seven. Looking to roll it through the legs. Went diagonally, came back in his path. And then he came back, struck the right foot and, and blocked what looked like it was going in the goal. Just bounced forward. His second, he had a shot from the other side of the field. Bounced it in front of the goalkeeper, Mohammed, um, when he just came on about five minutes after entering the field of play. That was spilled. Here comes Peter Lee Vassal on the left for Jamaica. So this Kelly has a number of options mm. in front of him. Ran straight into the Antiguan player. Now Parker decides... And hopefully want to take advantage of that bit of good fortune given to him by the Jamaicans. The play call back to Jamaican free kick. So six minutes unofficially to go, plus the time to be added. In fact, it's an Antigua free kick. Yes, it is. Just going across is Quinton Griffith, the captain. Having a chat with the referee. The referee says, play the whistle. Don't kick before I blow. And he's just trying to sort things out here. Standing behind the ball is Captain Quentin Griffith and immediately gets the action in train. The ball played in the area. The second time a ball like that has come across and it's beaten the Jamaican defense. Ah! Andre Blake following the play and having a go at his own defenders. What's happening, he says. Not Good happy. 
Good move by Antigas. Went eerily. Got it into the box. Two men on the, on the ball. Couldn't get a shot. And, and put it across the face goal and tried to scoop it home. But Andre Blake, perfectly poised, got hold of it. And Antigua once again in possession. Not only perfectly poised, but perfectly right. There's no way there are four Jamaican defenders around a player and he got that shot off cleanly without a challenge and that was what Andre Blake was really quarreling about here is Bowery Tegans and they're employing in the corner looking for that dead ball again yeah, they come again, the Jamaicans. This is Marvin Morgan. Here, flowing in the Savannah Park, even Breeze. One of the is standing in front of him. And not really the decision making of Marvin Morgan since coming onto the field. Trying hard to impress. Yes, he's having a really, really rich vein of form. But it's probably trying in a little bit too hard. General play. Yeah. And just, I can understand when a player is very confident and the confidence is running through, but he's got to also realize he's playing a team sport. So, Most Javanese is teams. coming up. More substitutions about to be made, and no doubt, yes, Lane Kelly started to look a little um, tired in the last 10 minutes or so, making bad decisions. The number 12, Javanese, coming in for Dane Kelly, the number 16. So the Portmore United player, who is second in the goal-scoring chart here for the Direct Strike Premier League, player reborn. Antigua also making a substitution, taking out Zane Francis Angol. Brought in the number four player, Luther Wilden. So, well, then another of their overseas based players coming off the bench for them with just about five or so minutes to go, plus time to be added. Morgan bounced out of that bit of play. Well, he's managed to keep win possession for Jamaica. Here's Marvin Morgan holding up the play. Peter Lee Vassal has been brought in. He too has decided to go for it right footed. So, they're almost like target practice. It's a Peter Lee Vassal. I think similar here. Um, I think the, the, the young players, enthusiastic, but probably getting a little uh, and rushing, trying to finish, trying to ink their name on the goal sheet instead of continuing the possession. As you see, there are three or four players defensively now for Antigua as they look to counter. Here they are, Antigua. A shot! And uh, it, was going, it was going away, but Blake taking no, no chances, chance. and he's getting an applause there from O'Neill Fisher. Encouragement there for the Antiguans. Good move. Nice turn away there, and the shot, Blake flying through midair. And that's Weston. Mm -hmm. This man's Weston. He's been one of their better players tonight. Man's Has Weston. been searching and searching yes. all, all night long and trying to just get one beyond. Um, Blake got one outside the far post, got one now outside the near post. Both left foot efforts, but Blake equal to the task. Not, not been forced into any real save since the start of the game, and we're talking about 18, eight minutes ago. So just about two minutes to go with time added um, to take into consideration as well. But this is Peter Lee Vassal. Ah, that's what almost opening the That's defense. what they want to do. That's the passing that, that, that you want. A little bit more patient, a little bit more deliberate, a little bit more accurate. And that's a better decision than himself and Morgan, who has been hurrying to finish. Well, Akeem Thomas has had a poor game tonight. Well, not a poor game, but it's kind of game that he would want to forget because of the goal, of course, that he... Uh, uh, unintentionally put into his own net but just now it was a telescopic right leg from him which prevented that ball opening the Antiguan defense or else the Jamaicans would have been in and you never know it could have been 2-0 and it could have been good night to the Antiguans as far as the scoreline is concerned but here they are they still have an opportunity to do so this is Javon East will he go for a shot no he plays it to Morgan Lee Vassal is waiting at Morgan ah wonderful there by Mohammed. And the spectators behind thought that was in the back of the net. But Mohammed brought off a tremendous save. This is a good goalkeeper, you know. He looks like he was in the wars with the bandage and the blood and everything. But look at that from Mohammed. The good ball save. went across him and he went across and deflected it behind. Brilliant. Very good save by Mohammed. Again, Marvin Morgan just turned to the left as if he was going to play in Peter Lee Vassal. Pivoted, came to the right, had a smacking good right foot shot. Mohammed doing equal to the task and deflecting it uh, across. But no corner? Well, the referee has <laughs> missed one or two. Just add that to it. Yes, yes. And call it three. Here's Akeem Thomas. And you know, Akeem Thomas is a good player, you know. Just that, that unfortunate hitting of the ball in his own net. 
maybe the only blemish on his him tonight and maybe that little nudge in the back of Blake. But outside of that, I think he's a, a really steady game. I you think know? I think he and and, and the, the Antigua Barbuda team would, would be fairly satisfied with what they brought to this game and what so far the majority of the game, ninety minutes on the clock, time to be added that is game. So I think it's a good game for, for, for both both teams so far. Here they are, Antigua Barbuda. This is Marlon Romeo. Parker. And the give and go with Romeo. Spread it back in the middle of the park. Pick out Thomas, Tamorley, the Tamorley variety. They're just sharing the football around Antigua until they intervene. Decision making and good discipline, just going across his man and chilling the ball into play. No, no flutters, no problems there. As a, another substitution um, is For being Antigua. made by Antigua. So we've gone past the 90 minutes, some minutes and counting. It's been added. We've not seen what the fourth official has shown. Perhaps he has already done so. But what we do know is that a substitution will be effective. Number 22 coming on. Someone on the far side coming across. We can't see the number. It's number 13. Come on, Thomas. Making his way off the park. And heading on. Uh, Akeem Thomas. So the big number 13 has been working all night on that right side, Tomali Thomas, against um, Kamar Taxi Lawrence. And now the number 22, Akeem Thomas, comes in for him, Jamaica, on that left side with Marvin Morgan. Jamil Hardware calling for it. The decision was to bring Peter Lee Vaseline in and Marvin Morgan again. Nice sharing of the football. Referee playing the advantage. No, call no he's called it back. Probably, probably couldn't shoot. So two minutes so far of bonus time played and expect at least four or five probably could go up to at six. least yes at yeah. least four or five all right let's have a look at it this is it referee just couldn't allow that to go i think that was a the opportunity to play the advantage and didn't cry or anything like no. that so maybe could have to make it worse still moving the ball around but this is the referee's decision to make he made the decision to call it back peter lee vassal standing over it kamar Lawrence is also standing he's not in your vision at the moment and joining the thought process here is uh, Fabian McCarthy. So number five, both players from Obey. From Montego Bay, right? And no doubt, both senior players probably advising Peter Lee Vass. Let's see if they give him the opportunity to, to strike. Why not? I would have. I would do so. Parker is pushing away. And who just came onto the field. And uh, referee tipping. It's pushing them further back. Chat with Jimmy Hardware. Unusual referee in here, though. Um, with yes. he, he talks to the players a lot more than, than is usual and takes long, slow decisions. Here's the kick um, for Jamaica. Faso! Again, Mohammed called upon to make another striking save. Peter Lee Vassal with a torrid shot from over on the far side. That was powerfully struck. But I tell you what, Mohammed is a decent if not a very good goalkeeper this is morgan he's going to be tested again and this time he's brought off another save he's keeping antigua the scoreline i was going to say he's keeping antigua in the game in fact he is ball coming across and this time beating a number of host of players and antigua they now have the freedom of sabina park what will they do with it this is parker surveying his option looking for action will he go for the shot he has an opportunity to shoot at blake Here's Weston. Header! And Antigua! They have equalized almost at the death! Yes, they have. Antigua! Can you believe it? They have been threatening all evening long. And just now, Vane, Francis, and Gaul has managed to hit the net. Joy unconfined in the Antigua ranks. It's the name of the number 16. Yeah, Zane, Francis Angal. Here's a left foot drive. Good save by Blake. Comes to the number nine who chips it at the far post and a smashing header from a standing position. Blake couldn't make the second save and Antigua um, equalizes late in the game and notches the goal they have been searching for all afternoon. Comes late in the game by Zane 
uh, Francis Angle, the big number 16 at the back post. Antigua won, Jamaica won. That was just all the good work of Parker. He picked the ball up over on the far side, dribbled all the way across the Jamaican area, and it, it opened up for him. I was saying, why did he not go for a shot? And the moment he did, and there you go. It's the end of the game. In fact, it's the last play of the game.